Now, I know I said this was primarily for your fans, right. and, and, and yes, but there are people, hopefully, that will be tuning in that have never picked up one of your books yet. So for these people who are desperately you know, lacking in, in, in this wonderful area, could you give them a little overview of, of Corval and, and Liad and... I know you've been asked this a million yeah, times trying, before. Trying to figure out how to be succinct about it. Um, in 1984, I came home from work one day and went right to the typer, the funky typer, and we'll talk about that, and started to type, and I typed and I typed and I typed, and finally I came out about four hours later, I guess, it was some and time. said to Steve, who had been patiently waiting dinner all this time, um, I think I have a novel, and I plunked down the piece of paper and had one line on it, um, which was, the man who was not Terrence O'Grady had come quietly. And Steve said, I picked it up and looked over it and I went, no, I don't think you have a novel. I think you have a series. And we sat down that night and had a glass of wine, or maybe two. <laughs> and <laughs> maybe uh, played several bottles. Um. We, but we sat there and we talked over, Sharon had come to this with some characters that she had worked with in her head for, for some years. And my, back, my background, I had been curator of science fiction at the University of Maryland, and I had read seven or 8,000, maybe 10,000 science fiction books over, over the years, so I had a lot of story in me. And Sharon had come up with these wonderful characters that she, she thought should come out, and by the end of the evening, we had, uh, actually, she didn't go to work the next day. Um, we stayed up all night and had uh, figured seven books. Figured this, had figured a series. Now that's not exactly the seven books that came out, but it was, it was, and still is, an action adventure series with some romance in it, with a lot of, in the there's intentional uh, concentration on partnerships and on personal responsibility. Personal responsibility. Whence the word that Sharon had invented, which is Malanti, and Malanti is the, your a situational ethics kind of a thing. So that the example I usually use is that suppose you have somebody who's a paramedic and is also a bus driver and they're driving down the road and come across an accident. Now in some states their Malanti as a bus driver is they may not leave the children on the bus if they're a school bus driver. They may not leave the school bus the, the children unattended on the school bus. And there's somebody out there that needs them. Now that's a Malanti problem because they have certain status in each situation that needs to be resolved. And that's one of the things that we deal with a lot. It's at the heart. Yes. Of it. that's that's just just Malanti is, is the, single, um, the single point of most conflict between Terrence and Lee Aiden because Terrence just don't get it. They, they say Malanti and they hear Malanti and they think status and that's not, that's not exactly it. It's not, it's not exactly. And so in a, it's a wide universe and it was a universe that, as we first presented it, already had a prehistory that, that we knew something of, and we already knew that we weren't ready to, to write that. So over time, we have filled in the blanks and gone back and put some of that in. And we, the very first book was Agent of Change, and we cherish one of the rejections for, for several reasons. <laughs> the one rejection was from somebody we had already known, I knew as, as, as a fan, from, who was an editor at Ace Books and said, well, let's, it's John Le Carre in space, so what? Oh like God. this is a bad thing? And this, this was Ginger Buchanan, and if Ginger watches this, hi, hi Ginger. Uh, and she, she, she had kept the book for some time wishing to see us at a convention so and explain why. So she break, break the news to us and, gently. And, and tell us why she wasn't going to take it. And then she didn't take it, and then it was published eventually by, uh, by Del Rey, and then Later on, it was picked up by Misha Merlin and became part of the, the omnibus of Partners in Necessity. And at that point, I was on a panel with uh, Ginger about space opera at a science fiction convention in Boscone. And 12 years later. And she's, she's sitting next to me. It would be about where Sharon is sitting now. And she was sitting next to me. And there was, I can't mention names, but there was somebody who was rather long-winded at the other end of the panel giving a rather long-winded response to something. And in the middle of it, Ginger kind of leaned over to me and said, are the rights to the Leighton books available for mass market now? <laughs> and so Ginger <laughs> Buchanan eventually came along and, and bought the story for Ace Books that she had originally uh, rejected for Ace Books. But, and that was an action adventure. That, that was, it was John Le Carre in space. It was um, a 
a, a spy story, a guy who needed to um, finish up his, his um, business and figure out where he was. As, as a person and a... As, as a person and figure out what his Malanti was, actually.